गुड मॉर्निंग व्यूअर्स आई एम डॉक्टर हर्ष एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एनाटमी ट्रिपल एम सी एच टूडेज टॉपिक फॉर डिस्कशन इज स्पीर वेनाकेवा पलमिनरी ट्रंक एंड इज आई गेस सिस्टम ऑफ पेन्स राइट लेट स्टार्ट विद द सुपीरियर वेनाकेवा नाउ आई हैव ड्रॉन दिस इज द सुपीरियर वेनाकेवा दिस इज राइट एट्रियम दिस इज एटा दिस इज एक्स पेली कार्ट्री सो दिस सुपीरियर वेनाकेवा इज फॉर्म बाय right and left by joining the right and left brachiocephalic vein in which in turn brachiocephalic is formed by the union of this right internal jugular vein and subclavian vein forms the right jugular vein similarly this side left internal jugular vein and left subclavian vein forms the left brachiocephalic vein both the brachiocephalic veins join to form the common superior vena cava common term called superior vena cava right so superior vena cava what it does actually it brings the deoxygenated blood right from the head and neck upper limb and thorax to the heart it is the largest venous channel which collects blood from the upper half of the body right and drains into the right atrium it is formed by the union of as i already read right and left brachiocephalic or innominate veins behind the lower border of the first right costal cartilage close to the sternum and each brachiocephalic vein formed behind the corresponding sternoclavicular joint by union of internal jugular vein and this is internal jugular vein and subclavian vein then now crores superior vena cava is roughly 7 cm long and it begins begins behind the lower border of the sternal end of first costal cartilage pierces the pericardium opposite the second costal right costal cartilage and terminate opening into the upper part of the right atrium behind the third costal cartilage so the rule of 3 applies over here 1 2 3 it means superior vena cava it begins behind the lower border of the sternal end of first costal cartilage so one first costal cartilage and then pierces pericardium opposite the second costal cartilage and then terminates opening into the upper part of the right atrium behind the third costal cartilage so so and this superior vena cava has no valves now come to the relations anteriorly will i lies the chest wall and internal thoracic vessels and anterior margin of the right lungs posteriorly we have trachea medially we have ascending aorta and brachiocephalic artery and laterally we have phrenic and nerve and accompanying vessels right now tributaries two tributaries i already discussed one is uh, brachiocephalic two brachiocephalic veins one is the esophagus vein and third one is mediastinal and fourth one is pericardial veins these are the tributaries of superior vena cava first is esophagus vein second is mediastinal veins third is pericardial veins and two brachiocephalic veins tributaries now regarding the development why the development is important because the abnormal vena cava right there are there may be two superior vena cavas present which is normal in case of of birds but in human beings it is due to developmental anomaly how it comes the intracard pericardial part of this superior vena cava it dwells from the right anterior card cardinal veins right anterior cardinal uh, sorry right anterior card right anterior cardinal veins below the oblique cross communication right between the anterior two cardinal veins anterior cardinal veins sometimes what happen is this oblique communication between the two anterior cardinal veins it does not develop so we have two anterior cardinal veins so we have two superior vena cava one it opens into the right atrium directly and the other one right uh, right uh, superior vena cava will open to the right atrium in this anomaly and the left one left superior vena cava will open into the coronary sinus in the right atrium right now the second part is the this is the ex, intrapericardial extra pericardial it dwells from the left duct of cuvier right which already duct of cuvier i already discussed in the previous lectures which is nothing but left common cardinal veins right now related to the applied anatomy of the superior vena cava applied anatomy if there may be obstruction in the superior vena cava above the level of the uh, esophagus vein or it can be blocked below the level of this esophagus vein this is esophagus vein right blockage may be above the level of esophagus vein or below the esophagus vein right so the collaterals will develop so the collateral mainly is internal th from the superficial veins so internal thoracic vein may drain by via, via two routes through superior epigastric vein through inferior epigastric vein then into inferior vena cava and then finally into right atrium or internal 
thoracic vein, midbrain into anterior intercostal vein, then into posterior intercostal vein, then into a zygous vein, then into superior vena cava, and finally into the right atrium. This one is the one root. The next collateral is the lateral thoracic vein, which drain into thoracoepigastric vein, then finally into inferior vena cava, and then into the right atrium. When obstructed below the azygous vein, the collateral circulation follows the azygous vein, superior and inferior epigastric vessel, lateral thoracic, thoracoepigastric, and to the inferior vein cava and finally into the left, sorry, left knee, right atrium, right? Now, the second topic which we will be discussing will be the pulmonary trunk. This is the pulmonary trunk, right? I have drawn the pulmonary trunk. This is a short topic which divides into left and right pulmonary arteries, right? The white pulmonary trunk, as we all know, it starts from the summit of infundibulum of right ventricle, right pulmonary trunk from the right ventricle. Both ascending aorta and pulmonary trunk, they both are enclosed in a common sleeve of serous pericardium in front of the transverse sinus, right? Transverse sinus lies between the arterial and venous end, so it lies in front of the transverse sinus, right? Now, the pulmonary trunk carry deoxygenated blood overlies the beginning of the ascending aorta. It overlies the beginning of the ascending aorta, then it courses towards the left. It courses towards the left and divides into right and left pulmonary arteries, right? under the concavity of this arch. Now, the right pulmonary artery courses to the right behind the ascending aorta and superior vena cava and anterior to the esophagus to become the part of root lung. It gives off first branch to the upper lobe before entering the hilum, right? The left pulmonary artery passes to the left anterior to the descending thoracic aorta. This is a descending thoracic aorta, so it passes to the left anterior uh, passes to the left anterior to descending thoracic aorta to become a part of root of left lung, right? So, it is connected to the inferior aspect of arch of aorta by ligamentum arteriosum, which is nothing but the remnant of ductus arteriosus. This is all about the pulmonary trunk. Now, the major important topic which we will be discussing is the azygous system of vein, veins, right? I have drawn the azygous system of veins. Let's discuss it and it's a very important topic. What is azygous system of veins? It is nothing but it is a communication between superior and inferior vena cava, right? So, I've drawn, I think it is visible. So, now the azygous vein drains the thoracic wall and upper lumbar region. It forms a important communication between superior vena cava and inferior vena cava. So, superior vena cava, inferior vena cava. So, azygous system is nothing but the communication between superior and inferior vena cava. Azygous actually means unpaired, right? Now, how it is formed? It is formed by three veins. One, two, three. This is lumbar azygous vein. This is ascending lumbar. This is right side. This is left side. This is lumbar azygous vein. This is ascending lumbar vein. This is subcostal or 12th posterior intercostal nerve. 12th posterior intercostal nerve is also called subcostal nerve, uh, vein, sorry, not nerve, it's vein, right? So, azygous worm is formed by the union of lumbar azygous vein, then ascending, right ascending lumbar veins, and this right subcostal. This is azygous and it is formed by the right things. Left we will be discussing afterwards. Now, the right subcostal vein accompanies the corresponding artery. The ascending lumbar vein is formed by this is ascending lumbar vein. Ascending lumbar vein is formed by the vertical anastomosis that connect the lumbar veins. A lot of my lumbar veins, they, they connect and form the ascending lumbar vein. So, ascending lumbar vein, lumbar azygous and subcostal vein, they form the azygous vein. Right? Now, course, it enters the thorax by passing through the aortic opening of the diaphragm. Right? Aortic opening, VOA, voice of America, venicable opening, esophageal opening, aortic opening. They lie at the 8th, 10th and 12th thoracic levels. So, through the aortic openings, the zygous vein enters the thorax by passing into the, through the aortic opening, right? The zygous vein ascends up to the 4th thoracic vertebra and then it arches forwards, here it is arches forwards over the root of right lung to join the posterior aspect of superior vena cava, right? Now, relations. Anteriorly, we have esophagus. Anterior to the zygous system, we have esophagus. Posteriorly, we have lower eight thoracic vertebras, right? And towards the right side, we have right lung and pleura, right? Towards the left, we have thoracic duct and esophagus. Now, the tributaries. First tributaries is right superior intercostal veins. 
right superior intercostal veins means how they are formed they are formed by joining of second third and fourth posterior intercostal veins so these all are the posterior intercostal veins so how many posterior intercostal veins are there 12 12th one is called subcostal vein so 12 posterior intercostal veins are present which forms the azygous vein right so the superior intercostal is formed by joining the second third and fourth they join to form a common trunk and finally drains into the azygous vein the number one tributary is this then fifth to eighth they uh, right posterior intercostal veins this is also a tributary second